Orgasms, orgasms, we love them, right? Or maybe we have mixed feelings about them. Orgasms are often seen as like the pinnacle of sex. These peaks of overwhelming pleasure are often seen as the aim of sex. And orgasms can feel really good, but they shouldn't be the goal of sex. And in fact, setting orgasm as the goal of sex can make it harder to reach that goal got yourself in a catch-22 there. So I didn't have my first orgasm until I was about 20 or 21 years old. And I definitely felt a bit broken before then because I couldn't come. I knew the theory of how to have an orgasm, but I still couldn't do it for myself. And I was talking about sex on the internet at this point and felt like such a fraud because I couldn't orgasm. I was also really worried that I wouldn't recognize an orgasm if or when it happened. And I was so hyper aware of every feeling in my body. Like, could that be it? Was that it? What's going on? Like, is that an orgasm? Because from other people and then also things that I'd seen in the media, orgasms are often described as mind blowing and fireworks, but that didn't really explain what it would feel like for me. And I would often ask like, how do I know? How do I know if I've had an orgasm? And the response that I got would be, oh, you'll know. And that just wasn't <laughs> very helpful to me at the time. So I wanted to make this video because I want to nerd out about all of the different ways that people have sex and experience orgasm, but also because I know that it can be hard to feel like you're not doing sex right if you're not having the same experiences as other people. The aim of this video isn't to help you have an orgasm, although I will be sharing some tips at the end, but to explore this cultural pressure that we've built up that actually stops us from being able to relax and enjoy ourselves in bed. And this video is sponsored by Cheeks. Cheeks is a membership that gives you unlimited access to a whole bunch of erotic films, audio stories, and education more about them later in the video. So what is an orgasm? A research paper called Normal Male Sexual Function Emphasis on Orgasm and Ejaculation from 2015 says, there is no standard definition of orgasm. And in the best-selling book, Come As You Are, sex educator and author, Dr. Emily Nagoski says, orgasm is the sudden involuntary release of tension generated in response to sexual stimuli. That definition gives no mention of genitals, muscle contractions, or specific sexual behavior. And as a sex educator and general nerd about sex, I personally really like this definition because of its lack of specificity. But sometimes when you're trying to connect it to your personal experience of sex and orgasm, you want specifics. Orgasms can happen during sex, yes, but they can also happen when you're asleep or when you're exercising or when you're in any other entirely non-sexual situation. And orgasms aren't pleasure dependent because pleasure is context specific. As Dr. Nagoski's definition mentions, an orgasm might be involuntary. So you may experience the physical release of an orgasm without any pleasure or without indeed wanting to. Rhythmic contractions of the pelvic floor are the most common sensation associated with orgasm, but they're not universal. Other physiological features associated with orgasm are increased heart rate, high blood pressure, and hyperventilation. There's also an associated release and elevation in prolactin and oxytocin, which are the feel-good hormones after orgasm. In general, orgasm will feel like you're spontaneously and suddenly done in some way. Afterwards, some people's genitals may feel numb and unresponsive, while others may feel ultra sensitive that any touch is irritating and uncomfortable. You might also feel relief, bliss, tingling, emptiness, or anything else. Some people experience a full body glow, whilst others feel like they've been suddenly snapped back into reality. Orgasm is also not the same thing as ejaculation for people with vulvas or for people with penises, even though we associate these things more closely for people with penises. But because there's no standard definition of orgasm, it can be really hard to know when you've had one. Basically, do you feel like you've had an orgasm? Then you did. Vaginal versus clitoral orgasms. Mainstream media has given us a very narrow script of what sex should look like. It tells us that sex happens between a cis straight man and a cis straight woman and goes from making out to hand sex to oral sex to penis in vagina, piv, penetration, and then ends with spectacular simultaneous orgasms. 
And that is a pretty limiting script. It frames there being a right way to have sex, which includes people with vulvas being able to orgasm solely through penetrative sex. Though it was perpetuated by many cis male scientists, we have Freud to thank for this idea that vaginal orgasms are normal and healthy and good and clitoral orgasms are immature. Damn you, Freud! The reality is, if we're looking at anatomy, clitoral stimulation is homologous to penis stimulation. Homologs are traits that have the same biological origins, even if they have different functions. Every part of the external genitalia of people with penises has a homolog in people with vulvas, so penis and clitoris and scrotum and outer labia. It's pretty culturally accepted that people with penises need penis stimulation in order to orgasm, so why do we treat clitoral stimulation so differently? So we expect people with vulvas to be able to orgasm through PIV because of, yep, you guessed it, the cis heteropatriarchy, which is the assumption that everyone is cis and everyone is straight and that the kind of sex that gives a cis straight man pleasure is the default and should work for everyone else. It's the people with vulvas who are broken because they don't like something that feels good to cis straight men. And shocker, some cis straight men don't like piv sex. You're definitely not broken if you can't come from vaginal penetration and you're not alone either. A 2017 study found that twice as many cis women could come from clitoral stimulation during penetration than from penetrative sex alone. And also Freud got it really wrong because during vaginal penetration, the legs of the internal part of the clitoris are being indirectly stimulated through the walls of the vagina. So there might not be such a thing as a purely vaginal orgasm after all. And speaking of types of orgasm, there really is no right or better type of orgasm. However you orgasm is the right way to do it. Different types of stimulation may lead to orgasms feeling different, but they are still all orgasms. So if orgasms all feel different, how do you experience them? It's word cloud time. All right, it's time for the what does an orgasm feel like word cloud. I am ready to post it on my Instagram and I have the presentation up here so I can see the results coming in. I'm very excited. Oh, it's happening. Okay, release overwhelming tension. Good spasms, intimate, powerful, warm, pleasure, love, connection, Oh my God, what fireworks, pulsating. Oh, what a great word, pulsating. Ripples, toe curling. Ooh, release and overwhelming are like the biggest ones as well currently. Tingly, satisfying, relaxing. Right, this is very satisfying and I'm gonna keep this rolling and we will check in once we have the final word cloud. Okay, so we have our final, what does an orgasm feel like word cloud. The biggest word I see is release, and then pleasure, overwhelming, relief, explosive, intense, tingly, pulsing, warm, euphoric. Oh my God, I'd love this. I wanna find some of these smaller ones as well. Needing to pee, out of body experience, dying. That links to our sex and death video. Uncontrolled, <laughs> a genital sneeze, love that. And then there's some here that wouldn't necessarily be described as positive, like disappointing, agony, frustration, losing control, which for some might be a good thing, for others might not. And then also quite big is pressure as well. And whilst obviously negative experiences suck, I think that it's really good to have like all of these different examples, positive and negative in this word cloud, because I think it normalizes that some people don't enjoy or don't have a good time with orgasm, whether that's all of the time or just some of the time. I really love this word cloud. If you want to dive into it a bit deeper and like see all of the details, I'll do the same thing that I did last time with the word cloud and pop it up on my blog, on my website, so you can have a look and See all of the different words. Also there's a lot of people saying I don't know, unknown, or I wouldn't know, and I hope that also normalizes that a lot of people also don't experience orgasm. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Now I want to talk about orgasms in the mainstream media. Now when Harry Met Sally is one of my 
favourite films and it has that diner scene in it where Sally shows Harry what an over-the-top exaggerated fake orgasm might look like. It is such an iconic scene and so things like that and other cultural depictions of orgasm are so ingrained in us and I remember seeing that film before I'd ever even had an orgasm and then when I did I was like hang on it was nothing like that at least for me my orgasms were very different to Sally's fake one. But between mainstream media and mainstream porn, we very rarely see realistic depictions of orgasms. Think about Bridgerton. There is a lot of sex in that show. And while we get one excellent masturbation scene and a quick oral scene, the rest of it is spontaneous piv with simultaneous orgasms. Most of the time, the way that we talk about orgasms sets them up as being this transcendent experience. Because of this language that we've built up around orgasm and orgasms being what our expectations of good sex are based on, we end up feeling like it's us who are wrong or broken if our experiences don't match up with these waves of mind-blowing pleasure. Some orgasms might be softer or gentler, and sometimes orgasm isn't the main event of sex. As we've seen from all of the words you submitted, orgasms differ from person to person, day to day, week to week, month to month. They may be different when you're on your own versus with a partner. They may be different with different partners. And that pressure hits the brakes of our sexual response system, which actually makes it harder to get aroused. And you can learn more all about the sexual brakes and accelerator in another video that I did. So we have a lot of cultural expectations around what orgasms and sex should look like, which puts pressure on us to feel like we should be having sex and orgasms in a certain way. But if you're looking for more realistic depictions of orgasms, you should check out Cheeks, who are kindly sponsoring this video. So Cheeks is a membership that that gives you unlimited access to a whole bunch of incredible erotic films, audio stories, and education. I talk a lot about paying for your porn because I think it's a really important part of treating porn performers fairly, but it can be really difficult to know where to start. And I've recently been using and loving Cheeks. Not only is their content great, but they really prioritize positive work conditions and content that is made with consent and transparency. And their content caters to all genders and sexualities and really explores the diversity of sexuality and pleasure. So Cheeks has four main categories. There's the watch category, which is where you can find all of the incredible erotic films. I absolutely love the selections that they have. There's also a whole bunch of educational films and there's just loads to explore there and I just love them. I love them. Then there is the listen category, which is where you can find lots of erotic audio stories and I've really been getting into my audio erotica recently. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know this because I'm all about that hands-free experience. It's very good. Then there is their learn category, which is their educational blog. And this has tons of really interesting articles all about sex and the porn world. So you can dive into things, find out more, learn more stuff. And finally, there's live, which are online workshops if you want to learn more, take a class, explore your sexuality in all sorts of different ways. A subscription with Cheeks costs £14.90 per month or just £9.90 per month with an annual subscription and there is no minimum term and you can cancel at any time. But of course, I have a code for you which gives you a 14-day free trial when you pick an annual subscription and you can cancel or switch to a monthly subscription at any time during your trial. So I can't put a link in the description because I have gotten into trouble with YouTube for doing that before, but you can go to this link, which is bit.do forward slash cheeks dash Hannah, and you use the code Hannah and you'll get your 14 day free trial. Thanks so much to Cheeks for sponsoring this video. And as this video is about orgasms, fun fact, I actually had my first orgasm thanks to porn. So big fan. So orgasms are amazing, but I know I've said this before, but you are not broken if you've never had an orgasm. In fact, it is totally normal to have never had an orgasm, to struggle to have an orgasm or to not want 
to have an orgasm. And despite the high pedestal we put them on, orgasms are far from the only way you can experience pleasure during sex. We don't always have sex so that we can come. We can also have sex so we feel connected to our partners. Because we're horny, bored, happy or sad. Because sex feels good even without an orgasm. Because we can't decide what to watch on Netflix. There are so many reasons why we might want to have sex and orgasms are just a small part of that. People who don't have orgasms can still have incredibly pleasurable and satisfying sex. Before I had my first orgasm, I still absolutely loved sex. And even now that I have experienced an orgasm, it's not always my favorite part of sex. This is where you get to say fuck you to that cis heteronormative sexual script and work out what feels good to you and your partner or partners. If orgasm is the goal, sex can get awfully boring and repetitive, with both of you trying to finish as quickly as possible without caring for much else. And yes, it is totally valid to want to have an orgasm, but it's also important to try and unpack where that desire is coming from and if it's coming from a place of feeling like it's something you're supposed to do. Not having an orgasm doesn't mean that you failed, it doesn't mean that your partner's failed to get you off, you can't fail because orgasm isn't the goal. And there's no way to do sex wrong. Instead of making orgasm the goal, can you make pleasure the goal instead? Shift to thinking what kinds of sensations feel good. What kinds of ways do you like to be touched? What are the things that bring you pleasure and what kind of sexy vibe or energy gets you off? Talk to your partner about what pleasure looks like for both of you and customize the sex that works for you. You can create your own scripts, write your own sexy menu, have a sexy pick and mix. And also sometimes orgasms can be disappointing. All of that build up and then it just kind of fizzles away or at the last second a toy or a finger just slipped out of place and you lost it halfway through. It happens. It happens. But hopefully the sex as a whole has been enjoyable and pleasurable so you can just laugh it off. But if you've never had an orgasm and you want to, what can you do? A good thing to try if you can't have an orgasm is to get rid of all of the things that may be hitting on your sexual break. Now, this is easier said than done. There are all sorts of things that could be hitting your sexual break from physical, practical things, like maybe it smells bad in the room, maybe you're cold, maybe you're thinking about work stress, maybe there is a pile of dirty dishes in the other room, but then also to the more like internal things about how you feel about sex. Is there shame there? What have past experiences taught you. It's all well and good trying to cultivate a really sexy and pleasurable context and working on the things that you do enjoy, but without working on removing the things that are hitting your brakes, you may not get very far. If you have a partner, it can really help to talk with them. You can share that you're anxious that you've never had an orgasm, that you're worried that they'll be disappointed if you can't. And of course, talk about the things that you do enjoy with them, even if you're not coming. You are allowed to ask for what you want in bed. If someone is having sex with you, they are probably invested in your pleasure and want you to enjoy yourself. And if they don't, well, maybe they're not a great person to be having sex with. Try to replace frustration with curiosity and aim for pleasure rather than orgasm. And then there's that big tip on how to orgasm, which is, yes, solo sex. Masturbation is a great way to explore your body, explore what different sensations and touch feels like, and to explore orgasm. Solo sex allows you to focus on your own pleasure without worrying about what somebody else might be thinking or worrying about taking too long. In Come As You Are, Dr. Emily Nagoski offers some advice about what people with vulvas can do who are experiencing frustration with orgasm. However, the same exercise can totally work for people with penises too, as it's all about taking things slow and exploring your body. Number one, find your clitoris. A great way to do this is by sitting in front of a mirror or just using a little hand mirror, would recommend. Number two, create a great context. This is somewhere where you feel safe and private and you aren't going to be worried about interruptions for about 30 minutes. Number three, touch your body and notice how that feels. Touch your feet and legs and arms and hands and neck and scalp. And when you're first learning to orgasm, you can stop here. Spend your 30 minutes just doing this, do it a few times a week for a couple of weeks, and then you can gradually incorporate your breasts, lower abdomen, and inner thighs. 
see, there really is no quick fix to having an orgasm. This is a project. <laughs> Number four, stimulate your clitoris indirectly. The most indirect form of stimulation is just thinking about your clitoris. You can also try rocking or rotating your hips to bring attention to your pelvis. Notice any feelings or emotions that might be emerging and treat them with compassion. When you're ready, you can move to more direct stimulation, but without touching the clitoris. This could be things like gently pinching or stretching your labia or placing the palm of your hand on your mons and pressing down on your lower abdomen. Number five, try direct stimulation. For most people, this is only pleasurable when already aroused. And so once you're feeling warm and turned on, try touching the clitoris directly. It's vulva puppet time. This is the clitoris and this is the clitoral hood. For most people, the clitoris is too sensitive to touch directly. And so you want to touch it through the clitoral hood, but maybe maybe you're into that and that's fine too. <laughs> Try touching the head of the clitoris with the flat of two or three fingers, rubbing in a circle motion, and you can try different sensations, different speeds, different directions, also different kinds of pressures, and as your arousal changes, notice and observe the changes in your body. Number six, keep breathing. As you experience sexual pleasure, muscles tighten and often people find themselves holding their breath. Periodically check in with yourself and relax your muscles and allow yourself to breathe. This exercise isn't about trying to make anything happen, but to just start noticing how your body feels in response to different kinds of touch and arousal. Notice the things that your body likes and just let your body kind of do what it wants to do. This exercise won't guarantee that you'll come, but it's a really great way to explore your body in a really low pressure way. And this is something that you can practice and try multiple times and see where it takes you. Thank you for watching. Go out and live your best sexual lives, whether that includes Foods, orgasm or not. And remember, if you want some ethical porn to awaken your biggest sex organ, your brain, then check out Cheeks. Go to bit.do forward slash cheeks dash Hannah and use the code Hannah to get your 14 day free trial when you pick annual subscription. I hope that you're doing well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.